Stephanie's presentation, you'll see the next half uh, was the budget process, which is something that was presented to you last year. It's just a reminder of that process you can look at uh, and ask us any questions. If you'll turn to the CAFRA tab, this is Harrison's presentation. It's all good. Supposedly, how to make 
it was kind of cold, so they don't lose on the speed up. Well, that's why they adjusted it down. As you can see in the far right column, with this decrease they're putting in, it could be upwards of 1.5 minutes, million for the county to be down through FY15. The county is doing fairly well, uh, about 873,000. The other problem is there really have been significant increases in car sales in the last three years, and it rose up. I doubt that's going to continue at that level. It'll probably slow back down. A lot of that had to do with people just not having enough disposable income to buy new vehicles for three or four years during the recession, holding off, and then everybody sort of jumped in at the same time. Now, hopefully I'm wrong, and they'll continue to do it, but it oh, seems yeah. like
partial payments, they don't apply it evenly to everything. They go down the line of the difference. The local option is lost. They don't apply them evenly. Something to ask, I know from a business standpoint, a business revenue, revenue when they're making their reports for their licenses and those sort of things. Um, is there any way we can look and see if those numbers are trending up or trending down? Um, we don't see the sales tax on that. We see the gross receipts from the, um, on the, on the occupational okay. tax registrations. The gross receipts. We see the gross receipts. We see their tax returns. Gross, well, no, but then gross receipts should be reflected in the sales tax as well. Yeah, I mean, you'd have to call out those that are sales tax rule things that are on um, that are that's the call okay. you know, professionals don't have right. it. Well, usually we get a professional license that's in the county same as the city. <coughs> but those are not set aside, but then you have companies that have re taxable sales and non taxable sales. That's right. Yeah. So that would be a little confusing. Yeah, like yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so it would be so now to, to try to, the next page does try to provide some explanation of why your sales taxes are going down. There were two areas they do a commodity report by month in, in calendar year in the Park Revenue website. Um, they use the NAIS whether it is code so that the, there's different areas, but these two were the ones that were down significantly, the one is wholesale. The only sales tax that I know of, and there may be another one that is collected at also level, level is fuel. So, assuming the majority of this is that, then this is reflected of the sewer, the fuel price is going down, it's down, because you're collecting a percentage of the sales price. So now that concept of switching to an excise tax and seven cents a gallon would have been a whole lot better. <laughs> but these prices could go the other direction and then seven cents a gallon wouldn't be as effective. Uh, we just don't know how all this is going to persist. But if fuel prices would come back up and benefit the county now on the flip side, you have a chance to look at this, you're paying a little fuel lower fuel prices in the county for operation. I doubt it's as much as you've lost the same tax, but it's probably, you know, a fair percentage of it you recouping in lower fuel prices. Um, <coughs> I don't know if you're going to get to it. <coughs> I know we watched that, that webinar regarding transportation funding act, and it was saying that because we didn't pass t splash that in 2017, we could uh, look at putting up to three pennies on the Three cents tax, basically, uh, and everything. And I just don't know, um, you know, your thoughts on that. They gave they gave us the opportunity. The opportunity to have a another go at a T spots. Mm -hmm. T spots or, or, or individual <coughs> counties rather than original. That's, That's correct. Right. Yeah. That's right. Um, I just want to know your thoughts on that. Mm -hmm. Well, and. We probably have to look at it in more detail, but it appears to me that between the squash and the LB um, and any other money you get from DOT, I think Mike's moving along with the most projects at a fairly good clip. Um, most important, he's not getting ahead of the numbers. <laughs> um, so it would really depend on if the assessment, it would depend on if felt like we weren't getting the infrastructure and other capital items, there wasn't enough funds to really do what you need to do on a routine basis. Uh, I also think that, that <coughs> you would be required, you're required to spend that revenue on state roads as well, but you wouldn't be able to do anything. A percent of, yeah, a percent of it definitely goes to, uh, to the, the, the marble type deal or whatever it was. Uh, that state program. Well, it does, but I think the roads, if you had a local peace loss, for example, in Lambs County, that
That revenue would have to be spent on state roads. You couldn't go out there and pay this road out here with that, with that revenue. That revenue has to be dedicated to state routes. I believe it's correct. Um, again, it's going to take a lot of work, but as, as experience has shown us, typically when the state says if you can do this for additional revenue, you're going to end up, they're going to end up with an opportunity to take revenue off the other end. So your net gain is going to be little to even a loss in some cases. And that's yet to be seen, but that's what you have to consider as well. Um, and so you know, there, there's, there, is, there is that opportunity out there, uh, but there'll, be, there'll, there'll have to be a lot, of, a lot more discussion in regards to that. Seven percent sales tax to eight percent sales tax. Well, I think they actually allow you to do it to as low as a quarter percent, so you can do it in quarter percent, quarter percent, percent increments as well. So that's something that would really have to be measured, uh, especially from the engineering side, mm -hmm. so where the county is, what funds, what do we do with those extra funds, and. Really and that's the key right there that I look at is what, is, is what are the needs for Lowndes County going to be? At, or will there be a need for us to do this? Keeping in mind possibly what the limitations on the, that revenue that you'll be where you'll be able to allocate. So that's where engineering would have to help you. And of course then you know you'll have to take some consideration uh, from cities as well. They will also be able to utilize that revenue too. There's a lot of discussion. Yeah. Um, okay. Next page, I'm you know, keeping you up to date on SPOS 7. What I do is the revenues I put in here are actual revenue amounts and then they're allocated on percentage basis, except for the those items on the bottom, we have a fixed amount for them, and that's per the referendum. Those are not going to move whether the sales tax goes up or down. Only the top items are impacted by going up or down. So roads down to 911 center could be impacted. Um, so we put in the actual numbers as they occur, and the rest are projected very conservative. I think so far most of when I put in the actual higher than we projected. Um, mainly because of the lessons we learned from SWAT 6. We're trying to be very conservative. The expenditures are actual. So for roads, you know, this year, so far half of the year, he spent three million dollars, but his revenue number has been three point two million. And then at the bottom it gives you a net figure of where they lie. Um, so it basically just keeps us aware of anybody who's getting ahead of the money um, because about, you know, I guess it was about a third of the way through SWAT 6, it took a dive, a tremendous dive, that's when the recession hit. <laughs> well, a lot of money in this stuff runs aggressively to get some projects done. So, Suddenly, there was no more uh, And paying off the debt that had been issued for the bonds had to pay higher priority than the projects. We were fortunate not to have that kind of debt on this one, but we still want to make sure we're watching the bonds getting millions of dollars ahead of what they would have by the end of the spots. So far, everybody's well in the I think we got a pretty good good watch dog looking at it. <laughs> <laughs> and I do send each department head their individual report by email so they can see where they are and remind them. Um, and then I get a, occasionally I get a comment back. <laughs> <laughs> because usually I tell them something they don't want to hear. <laughs> um, which is unfortunate, like it's going down now and it is eating into it. We'll just have to move, like I said, I think if prices come back up, um, which quite frankly they say would be better for the whole U.S. economy because we're taking 
huge hit when the fuel industry is crossing the US. I mean, a lot of things have just shut down, jobs have gone away. It's probably a little low. It's good for it. It was too high and yeah. it made an adjustment, but again, it adjusted too far low. Right. So it's probably healthier that it come back up a little bit. Right. I mean, and also possibly an alternative fuel, where they put a dent in front of cars and yeah, stuff. Yeah, there is, there is something that way too. But it's basically the south. That's the bottom line. You know, if they would just stop doing that, they probably would be better. Um, and then finally, on the last page, I've done an analysis of the health of the pirate, which I think is when y'all wanted to y'all just spoke about this. Um, first of all, your general fund has I want to know is you are at the four-month reserve, which you're supposed to be at. I believe that's your so you're back at it's 4.06 reserve, four months reserve. Um, retirement expenses are holding. Uh, as you can see on the bottom, though, the county really took a tremendous increase in 2012, but it's pretty much held. It's a little over two million every year, whereas you used to pay about 1.2 million. So with the markets doing what they've done and and everything else going on in the economy, um, your retirement had to have bigger contributions. Um, your health, while it's gone up tremendously since 2010, so does everybody else's. <laughs> but it did settle down. It'll probably stay in the $5 million range, but you never know four, five, six critical illnesses, cancer, heart disease, anything like that to blow it out of the water. Um, just when you think it's leveled out, we're going to hold it, it will skyrocket. And typically those, for whatever reason, I see them happening in three year intervals. I don't know if I have the magic interval. It'll hold and hold and hold and then it will jump. And then it may level back at that level, but it never comes down. That's the other thing I haven't noticed. Uh, and that's true even in, for private businesses. We, we never get an estimate for the next year that's lower. We're, we're usually scrambling to change insurance companies or raise our deductibles <laughs> or whatever. Um, you know, it's just a problem that everybody's got. And it's no different in government. I think healthcare evolves quicker than any other industry whenever we talk about those prices moving because we saw this 15 years ago with the preferred provider networks. If you agreed to be a part of that club, then you got a discount. Well, initially those discounts were running anywhere from 25 to 28 percent. Then as the industry caught up with that, um, the entire healthcare industry moved on to the next thing. Um, then we saw the ambulatory surgical centers. Um, physicians across the nation were building their own surgical centers, which had an impact on hospitals which caused hospitals to then have to adjust their pricing to be able to recoup that revenue and move on. Then, you know, we move on to the next thing. And a lot of that is what Commissioner Marshall mentioned earlier with telemedicine. Um, and you see people um, like Myron Fickoff, for instance, who, you know, treats patients um, in the manner that he does. So, again, we're on the edge of another evolution of, of those changes. So, all that. Uh insurance industry continues to set records in revenue. Oh, absolutely. And profit dollars. Yeah. Con profit. Continue. <laughs> and unfortunately, there are so many layers to it. It's not always the physicians that are seeing the return on that. Right. It's all of the companies <laughs> and all, all of the intermediate con contractual oh, requirements that you no, have to have. The well, hospitals and physicians are basically in a capitated state right mm -hmm. now. No matter what my insurance goes up, there's no return to them at all. They are at a fixed price level and they ain't getting cut every year. Whether it be Medicare, Medicaid, or insurance, all are different. And where we are for this with the state right now, as far as Medicare reimbursements, that's not going to be a question for you. Well, another part of the equation is the price of medicine, the pharmaceuticals. 
industry because we feel to not want to go to the doctor because of what they're going to prescribe. So we want the home remedies uh, or what have you, because that medicine really, it, it costs, especially with the elderly, my grandmother, my grandmother. We had a utilization review that our broker did on our plan this past year, and with the renewal, it actually added an additional tier to our prescription card for the employees. And basically it was um, allergy medicine and um, GI medicine, like Prilosec and things like that. So Claritin, Alvert, Prilosec, that sort of stuff. Um, they compared what it costs because those things are, you've got the over-the-counter version and you've got what the doctor can prescribe. So there's a different cost industry-wise to that, whether you're buying it through a plane or you're buying it over the counter. So they did an audit and showed us where over the next year we will save over $71,000 based on our last year's utilization if we offer those two um, medications um, at no charge for our employees. Now they still have to have a prescription. It can't be that you just go in and say, here's my prescription card and you know, I want this for free. Your doctor still has to prescribe it, you still go through the pharmacy, um, but it does not hit the employee. And just just that one change, this one year, will save seventy five dollars. How do I deal with that? That's all I have. Oh, yeah. Any questions? Yeah. Any questions? Anything? I, we have discussed um, previously. Cornerstone of our uh, overall picture plan is based on our financial conditions. We have tried to put emphasis at our retreats, uh, in the beginning of the retreat, on the finances. So it helps you have a perspective for the remainder of the uh, items that you'll be discussing. So it's really important if there are any questions or any. Y'all would like to make um, regarding those finances that Harrison and Stephanie both are uh, available, uh, certainly now, but also in the time during this process. Uh, anything concerning what you have heard from the audit, what you heard from uh, Stephanie and now from Harrison? I just want to just, just commend you, Joe, the agent, the rest of the staff, and Stephanie, because uh, as I told Bill, when I look back, uh, other municipalities or governments were borrowing money uh, to meet last year's needs. <laughs> and, you know, Joe asked us about, you know, presented us with the options and showed us that we were in a good position, that we didn't have to borrow. Besides, you had to pay it back by December 31st. I mean, so uh, I just wanted to commend our staff uh, for an outstanding job. I would like to possibly, you know, uh, know, know your thoughts on the, the future retirement plans <clears throat> as a whole with county governments, because I, I hear a lot of you know, this or that, you know, from other, other, other governments about the retirement programs and how they need to phase out or, or modify or what have Well, we did, uh, we haven't did some research into this. The only option that we saw is you have a defined benefit plan rather than a defined contribution plan. The defined benefit being that the county is going to pay that individual an entire uh, calculated amount for the rest of their life. A defined contribution is that they just take the money they have put into the plan on the county match and roll it into an IRA or whatever they chose to do, take the money and go, and that's what they have to live off of. Um, surprisingly, there were a number of counties who were switching from defined um, contribution plans back to defined benefits, which shocked me because I thought um, they would be going the other way because the defined contribution, your life, your exposure is cut off. I mean, basically, once you pay it in your match and the employee puts in theirs, the county has a liability from the going forward. Um, but there were people, there were counties and cities moving both directions 
poetic briefs, but I don't know what the circumstances were. Uh, it's something you can continue to look at. For this county, it would have to be a long-term phase in. You certainly wouldn't want to cut off people who have served the county for 10 more plus years who have, who have contributions in their name and, and you know, plan on using the current retirement system. But basically, counties who have converted over, they cut off that plan in terms of contributing for new employees and then start putting them under a different plan. It has to evolve into it. But you would continue to have the liability exposure of the old plan, the current plan, uh, for many years. Um, I know of Moore County, they did this about, gosh, it was probably 15, 20 years ago, and they still have a lot of those employees retired out and were paying them out. Um, so we would have gone with that. I think it's pre dated you or after you. See, that was all But you, you continue to have, and if the market changes, then obviously the county contribution to the current plan has to go up, but you have to maintain a certain level uh, to stay ahead of it. And that's what the valuation is for annually. It tells you, here's what you need to contribute so you can long term, you can stay. But that cost can rise if you know investments are not doing well. Uh, because ultimately, the county's got to have enough money to pay out the retirement. Um, so, but it's also how the, your employees in your workforce look at it. A lot of people come to government because of that in health insurance. They see that as a big benefit. They like the old, what we call pension concept, which most industrial and manufacturing companies have gone away from. They don't like the 501k concept because that, if you, if you don't get enough money in there, if the employees not willing to put their sugar in, they can end up short by the time they retire. The complication is there. It's really up to them to figure out what to put in along with the cash match. Um, people are living longer, and what they're finding out is that that, that amount of money they get when they walk out the door is not quite enough. Whereas the retirement plan, they know that's coming the day they die. I appreciate it. Thanks, Let me want to make a statement um, about something really that doesn't get a whole lot of attention, um, but I think it's extremely important. And it's one of these things that once you see it, you kind of wish you could I wish that had been my idea, or I wish I'd thought about that. Um, we, I can't take credit for this, but the mission statement for Lambs County is on the front of your binder. We thought that it was extremely important that that would be added there. Uh, Chairman Rod Casey was the author of that statement, and it pretty well says what our responsibilities are, and I, I share that with you so that you don't have to go back in front of your, bi your binder. But it says, to provide an efficient, effective, and responsive local government to all citizens of Lowndes County while maintaining the financial strength to meet any contingency. And that goes back to the importance of being sure that we're able to fulfill this mission statement and be able to be good stewards with the, with the funding that, that the citizens of Lowndes County allow us to have so that in the event of a contingency of any kind, we would be able to meet. Uh, that again goes back to staff, Mr. Pritchard, Ms. Black, everybody that's involved up there buying into that one con uh, concept that we have to be vigilant of the fact that we have to be able to take certain revenue, maintain a certain level of fund balance in the event of any contingency we would be able to, to handle. So again, a credit to them, and again, it's going to be our responsibility as commissioners at this time to also live by that mission statement. I see no reason whatsoever 
reading that one, that mission statement today or any time in the future would ever have to be changed. It's about as complete as it can get. Chairman, Commissioner Evans was also part of the development of that mission Ms. statement. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> credit where credit is due. Good visionaries where it really boils down to. Jason is on his way up, so if you want to break until then. I think a good little break of that